Hello, good morning, everybody. Let me begin by asking who among you, uh, the, my, the title of my talk is Erosion of Cultural Identity, that's a sub theme chosen for me. But the question is who among you feel that your cultural identity is being eroded? Let's have a show of hands. Okay, these are the um, scattered minority. Now, the question is why so few have put up their hands? And why this should be on the sub-theme at all, if so few of you are worried about this? Well, let me suggest three reasons why only a, a, a few hands went up. First, youths have not lived long enough to develop a strong and mature sense of cultural identity and consequently are especially susceptible to being molded or manipulated by political leaders for a political agenda. Second, the term cultural identity has not been defined yet. I've not defined it. What does it mean? Does it refer to nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, clothes, food, or other traditions, or a combination of all of these. It also, thirdly, could refer to, uh, well, it says something about those who picked this sub-theme, that these are the old people who picked it. <laughs> Erosion of cultural identity and the Asian values debate was something that was current for those who grew up in Singapore in the 1980s to the mid-1990s as an early response to what is now known as globalization. But let's go to the, um, the first point about youths. Youths as agents of cultural change. Now, history does offer us some extreme examples of young people being used by political authorities to further a political agenda. One case is the Hitler Youth uh, in the run-up to the Second World War uh, and during the Second World War to advance a Nazi agenda in the name of German culture. Or Chinese youth in the Cultural Revolution, uh, late 1960s, uh, to advance a communist agenda in the name of Chinese culture. The question for us here in Singapore today is, is there any legitimate concern that this could happen in Singapore? Is there any real danger that our youths could have their still formative cultural identity exploited by the PAP or subverted by some insidious external power or influence? We need to take a longer view of all of this. As a historian, I have to say that Singapore, this island at least, or the people that have come and gone on, on this island have had a varied cultural history and multiple cultural identities. Long, long before 1819, you have Tamasic Singapura, various ethnic groups passing through a loosely organized Indo-Islamic political system. After 1819, you have colonial Singapore, various ethnic groups coexisting under a British colonial government and a plural society. Then after 1965, you have the Republic of Singapore, various ethnic groups coexisting under an independent Singapore government, but this was a state without a nation. You have the political institutions and trappings, the boundaries of a state, but you have many groups. They did not form a nation. And so you have nation building as a means of political survival. I have to refer to this um, We the Citizens because I come from the S. Rajaratnam School. S. Rajaratnam, Singapore's um, first foreign minister, he was one of the principal authors of our pledge. And in a way, this is a symbol or a form, a formula of organized cultural identity, how the nation, how the government has tried to organize a nation here on this island. So the first phase 
nation building after 1965. Out of many formerly colonized peoples, one united people. We the citizens, one united people. At least that was the formula. And then take note, regardless of race, language, or religion. So here was a sense of belonging. They were trying to orchestrate a sense of belonging to the new nation state, which was emphasized and elevated above existing cultural identities, a kind of a, a, a national identity that would be an umbrella over all the other identities. Now, is this formula of a cultural melting pot exceptional or not? Is Singapore peculiar, unique in having this kind of thing? No, I mean, even America has this Latin motto on the great seal of the United States. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. They have been at it since 1776 when they had the uh, when they started the War of, uh, the, of Independence, 1783, they had the, um, the uh, Declaration of Independence and so on. And even today, you have finally a black American in the White House. Of course, you have many white Americans. <laughs> then you have uh, uh, yellow Americans, you have Hispanic Americans. Of the yellow Americans, you have Japanese Americans, Korean Americans, Chinese Americans, lots of different sort of um, cultural identities of mingling, coexisting in this uh, American melting pot. And they've been at it since the 18th century. Uh, we've only been at it since 1965. 